You are listening to the number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast in the world. This is Mind Pump. Now, in today's episode, we took live questions from listeners who wanted some answers for their fitness questions. I'll get to those in just a second. But before I do, let me go over what we talked about in the intro portion, which was 36 minutes long. That's where we talk about current events and studies and talk about our lives. So we open up by talking about how Adam is the first person out of all of us to miss a workout. Now, oh, he, man. He gives an okay excuse uh, in the episode. Uh, actually, he talks, about, he talks about his hormone replacement therapy that he just started. So if you're a guy and you have low testosterone, you're going to want to listen to that part of the, the episode. Then we talked about Justin's glorious golden skin. Ooh, I'm glowing. Looks really good right now. And that's because he's using Caldera. Caldera has all natural products that balance out the oils in your skin if you're watching on YouTube, when you take a gander at Justin's face, and uh, you'll know that that stuff works. By the way, because you listen to Mind Pump, you actually get 20% off any of their products. Go check them out. It's good stuff. It's very, very good for your skin. It's Caldera Lab. That's C-A-L-D-E-R-A-L-A-B.com forward slash Mind Pump, and then use the code Mind Pump for 20% the off. proof is in my face. So. Then I talk about my infant son and his obsession with boobs. It started already. Eight <laughs> weeks old. Can you believe that? Total boob guy. Then we talk about people getting struck by lightning and other weird stuff. Uh, we bring up the Tiger Woods documentary. Um, and then I talk about how coffee may actually lower risk of prostate cancer. And then we brought up our friend Yay, ben, coffee. ben Greenfield's protocol for fighting COVID because he got COVID and he killed it in like two days. Uh, then we got into the questions. The first question was from Oliver from Michigan. Then we talked to Gabriel from Florida. Then Sally from Alabama. And then we talked to Matt from Texas. By the way, when we talked to Matt, we recommended to him MAPS Performance. This is one of our workout programs that focuses on movement and mobility to improve aesthetics. Aesthetics meaning the way you look. So better develop muscles, more balance, more fluid motion. Now, in the episode, we actually gave him access to MAPS Performance for free because he was one of the lucky callers. But because we did that, we wanted to extend something out to our listeners we're actually going to give all of you, for the next week, 50% off MAPS performance. So if you listen to that part of the episode and that applies to you and you want to try out MAPS performance, here's what you do. Go to mapsgreen.com. That's M-A-P-S green.com. And then use the code GREEN50. That's G-R-E-E-N-5-0. Now remember, this program is a full workout program. It specializes in movement, mobility, strength, and functionality, and of course, it improves aesthetics through all of that. Um, it comes with workout videos and blueprints, so you know exactly what you need to do. It's a very phenomenal program. It's actually one of our core workout programs. And again, you get 50% off within the next week. One more time, it's mapsgreen.com, and then the code is GREEN50. Yeah. Speaking of handsome people, <laughs> uh, one of us... Didn't show up for the workout today. Oh, Ooh. come on. This doesn't count. The, first, the first person he to fail. First. La fail. Listen, Linda. Listen. It he doesn't... always wants to be first place. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> Guys, I just don't want to be the guy. This, this doesn't, doesn't count. Yeah. This yeah. doesn't count. Yeah, the guy. I remember you saying that. This yeah. doesn't count. I, I got my, uh, I go get my blood work today and I was told not. Oh, really? Not, yeah, yeah. So I go for my hormone stuff. Um, so I go, uh, later on this afternoon and she said, uh, make sure you don't, uh, work out. Oh, uh, they want to make sure you don't spike uh, anything you're not supposed to. Yeah. That, so my first, so this is uh, my, my second follow up. uh, yeah, so I was going to ask you if we could talk about it now. Cause, uh, yeah. So I, I, I mean, uh, complete transparency. I was waiting for some stuff to go through with, um, the company that I'm working with because I, uh, you know, they wanted to do some sort of a sponsorship deal and this and that. And, um, in fact, we're still in conversation, but at this point, I'd much rather just talk about it. You know what I'm saying? It's already been, I'm on, I'm actually today marks, uh, four weeks, um, that have officially started, uh, the hormone replacement therapy. And I know on the show, I've talked for a long time that, you know, once Katrina and I, uh, got pregnant that I would most likely end up going back if I could never get my levels up any higher than what I had done. You know, I did a lot of work the first couple of years to try and rebound them and get them up to, healthy levels. And I, and I'm in that range where, um, I'm on the lower. Okay. Level. Um, but I've always felt, you know, I don't really bitch and complain on here. Mm. Uh, I know I did early on when I, when I was really going through it. Uh, but it's been a battle the last couple of years to, um, get back to kind of my normal self as far as energy levels. Like I feel sluggish in the afternoon and, and I'm checking all the boxes, all the things that we talk about, uh, to really make, 
make sure that I'm optimizing it as much as I can. Yeah, you're doing everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I and I took it from you know in the the low 200s um, right into the I, I broke into the 300s and then low 400 when I was uh, the last three years, and then I've just kind of just just there. That's so my peak right now is low 400 uh, levels. Which if I were to see a general practitioner. Um, they might be like, oh, you're fine. You're not in danger uh, of anything. No, once you go below 300, then a general practitioner will put you on yes. uh, testosterone. However, if you're in the low, if you're under, I believe, 450, and you have symptoms of low testosterone. So it's actually 650. It's 650 for, so a hormone therapist. If oh, you, that's, you're talking about the hormone uh, therapist specialist. Yes. I'm talking about like you go to your normal doctor. Oh, a GP? Yeah. yeah. No, a GP, they won't even mess with you if you're under 400, yeah. even if you mark those things. Because I've gone and seen a GP before and talked to them about how I felt. And they're like, oh, you know, you're okay. We'll see if, it, you know, we'll check again and see if it mm-hmm. comes back up. Um, but I had been recommended to like, you know, why don't you go see a special, a hormone specialist and see what they say to you. And their markers is if you're under 600 or 650 and you mark enough of those things like low energy levels, libido, all these different, there's like Mm -hmm. a, a whole questionnaire I had to fill out. Um, and then, then you qualify for it. And, you know, when I told her my history of like anabolics and, and using it for competing and even before that in my twenties, she was like, she was like, oh, you're most likely going to. Well, you know, I found a study mm-hmm. that showed that men who used um, anabolic steroids and not even a lot, just guys who had used it a few times or whatever, that a majority of them um, later on in life, especially as they approached their forties, had uh, lower testosterone uh, compared to other men. Oh, interesting. So there are long term because of the intervention because you got an exogenous uh, leak. Well, there's a feedback loop when you take uh, steroids or testosterone that your body stops producing its own. Doesn't take mm. much, by the way. You don't have to take much testosterone uh, to have that happen. And in fact, it's been testosterone has been um, studied as a potential contraceptive for men because of that negative feedback loop. One of the side effects of that is lowered sperm count. Um, and it doesn't take, again, it doesn't take much. You could take a tiny bit and your body starts producing. Well, that was our biggest concern, right? So, you know, when I came off, right, this has been, God, it's been over three years now. So when I came off and I went through that whole depression, I tore Achilles, which by the way is correlated to low testosterone too. So, uh, that, that happened that then that during that time, I think I was like 150 or two. I was really, really low around that time. Um, and I went through it for a while, uh, to kind of get it back up to somewhat healthy, and, you know, the only reason why I didn't get on HRT back then was because I knew that it would decrease our chances of getting pregnant. Mm-hmm. And that was really important to us at that time. And so uh, even though I was kind of, you know, quietly going through it, um, I didn't say anything and I was not going to, you know, put that on us to to possibly get back on and then make it more difficult for sure. Katrina. Katrina had that cyst she was going through. So we were already, you know, there was a, a year there that I don't know if the audience knew that or not that we were trying and she didn't get pregnant. Mm-hmm. So we had already, so you have me with my hormone levels and my issues that I was having. Then you have her with her cyst that we didn't know about at the time. And we had been trying for a year. And so even though yeah, HRT sounded like a great idea for me, I was like, just, I don't want to decrease any of the chances of us potentially getting pregnant. Well, you do know, a lot of people don't realize this, but uh, low testosterone levels in men puts you at increased risk for a lot of chronic disease. Mm-hmm. So, uh, prostate, believe it or not, prostate cancer risk goes up with low testosterone. Um, your your odds of dementia, Alzheimer's go up, diabetes goes up, uh, even heart disease. You you know, a healthy levels of testosterone are healthy for your body. Now, if you take bodybuilder doses, right, you're, which is like many many times above what would be considered the top limit, then you're causing yourself other problems. But if you're low you have issues as well. And like what I've always said on the podcast is if you're low, try to see if you can raise it naturally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But if you try and it still stays low, it might be healthier to, to have your hormone levels brought up or right. optimized. Well, I wanted to give it a really good chance of me. I mean- Yeah, with, three years is a good chance. Yeah, yeah, right. So I think that, uh, I think I get, and I, and I have consistently now done blood work and it has stayed like right at that, that low 400 or lower, right? So it's dipped sometimes. Um, and then it stayed right at the, right around that 400 mark. And, you know, their goal, so their goal is this, the way it looks. So it's, I take, um, 150 milligrams. I was just going to ask, what do they give Yes. They, they, they give me 150 milligrams a week right now, uh, plus 250 IUs of HCG that the HCG is to keep my natural production up still. So it still is not, 
uh, I mean, I, it still decreases my chances of, of, of pregnancy and stuff like that, but it still it mitigates that by taking the HCG, right? Now, so, it's, hmm. it's test, uh, is it testosterone cypionate? Yeah, cypionate. Okay. Um, so, so this is the way it works, right? So it's once a week that I, I, I get, I get a, a shot from them. It's based on a, a little more than a half cc of 200 milligram uh, testosterone, so it's 150. Uh, their their goal is that you it shoots me up to like the 900 or so range, and then at the end of the week I come back down to about you know five six hundred, and then you take another shot, and, then, and so it kind of keeps me in the upper up upper range of testosterone. And so this is my you know fourth week of on that dosage. They'll redo my blood again uh, and see if I'm coming down to what they expect me to come down to. And if I come down to right where they will, they'll probably keep me on the same dose. If I'm lower than what I should be, they'll put me on a little mm -hmm. bit more, but they don't, they won't give you, you know, a dose that, you know, is like a bodybuilder type. Of yeah. Thing. I was going to say, this is the first time you've actually done this through a clinical setting, you know, with, with hormone doctors actually managing everything. Yeah. That I, so in the past I've actually had doctors go do my blood work and then tell me, and then I've done black market on my mm -hmm. own and then managed my own stuff. Uh, this is the first time that I've actually gone through a clinic, had them constantly be measuring blood. They're the one prescribing it. Like I'm just going to follow their dosage. I'm not going out a beyond or any more than that or taking anything else. It's literally just to kind of see how I feel. And I tell you what, man, um, the next day, literally the next day, it was night and day different for me. And what was night and day was like, of course, somebody who has used anabolics as many times as I have, I, I don't feel strong. I don't feel anabolic. Oh, that, takes, that takes like weeks. Yeah, I, and, I, and I don't feel that right now. I'm on four weeks right now, and I don't feel that still right now. What I feel is good. Like, I feel good. I, I feel I excited to work out. Like, you know, the workouts in the last couple of years, a lot of self-talk going on with me, like to motivate myself to go through it mm. again. And you're not going to hear that negativity from me on the show, but you know, it was a struggle for me because this is, I love fitness. I love to work out. Like I was the type of person that liked that liked working out so much that when I go to bed, I'm thinking about my workout the next day. Right. And that will literally happen. Like so the, not feeling that it just feels off. Oh yeah. It just totally feels off. And you know, and then I'd have these dips in energy around two o'clock in the afternoon where I just want to take a nap. And so if I didn't get an exercise in before that, then I would totally not do anything mm -hmm. that day. So yeah, it's come what I feel right now is is amazing compared to what I feel. I don't feel like I said, super strong or feel like I'm anabolic. I just feel healthy and normal. Yeah, well, bodybuilder doses are five, six, seven times, 10 times higher than, than what you're taking. Yeah, yeah. So now compared, so because this is pharmaceutical grade, this is doctor prescribed testosterone. How does it compare to black market? Because from what I've read, uh, black market stuff tends to be underdosed uh, because there's no way to check it. So right? that's an interesting question, Sal, because, uh, and I'm trying to like put my finger on this right now, right? Because uh, in the past, um, you, the the feeling that I feel right now from it uh, on this low of a dose, like I've been on this low of a dose before, like when I'm coming off of testosterone, um, I would wink, I would- But I it would, was black market. Yeah, but it was mm -hmm. black market. Um, I definitely, uh, this feels better feels cleaner but it's like come on it's uh, i don't know you know i don't know for sure you well know? I look i tell you what i've read studies where they've taken black market anabolics and stuff that's not labeled testosterone so stuff that's like boldenone or decadurabolin which is you know nandrolone that's another these are all steroids that are not testosterone but they're you know uh, they take this the testosterone molecule and they change it a little bit to make it a different anabolic steroid all those many times they'll test them so the bottle says Nandrolone, they'll test and be like, no, it's testosterone and anthate or sipinate because testosterone is cheaper. Or they'll take testosterone and anthate or sipinate. They'll test it on the bottle, the black marker bottle. It'll say 200 milligrams per milliliter. They'll test it and it's 125. Now, I don't, I don't, I don't completely disagree with mm. you. Like that's obviously possible. But there's also I've I've read things that uh, that say that a lot of the black market stuff sometimes. Um, is some of the best stuff because now you have these these people that are on these forums that are making big big money that are uh, selling steroids on the black market and their reputation is on the line. Like I've dealt with stuff, you know. Again, nowadays, you know, you got that kind of that uh, that market. You know. Yeah, this guy. I mean, if if you're if I'm getting from this guy on the black market, he is 
got a major reputation. He's got, you know, 10,000 reviews. And if anything doesn't come through the mail, he, he resends it to you. Like there, there's, it's a lot more sophisticated today than what it was, you know, 10, 15 yeah. years ago when you and I were probably uh, around that stuff. Now, you know what the problem with that is, is that, cause I've been, uh, God, what was that website that they took down that was doing all, Silk Road? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Silk Road. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. And the, the problem with that is like, if you're testing other drugs, from what I read, there's easy test kits you can buy online. In fact, you could test something to see if it has, uh, you know, what is it? Uh, ecstasy. It's a very easy test kit. In fact, you could buy one online, I believe. But to test testosterone and to see how many milligrams there are in a milliliter, I think it's an expensive process. I bet it is. So I don't know if it's, uh, it, you know, it's challenging, right? So the reviews may be something like- Right, right. They feel it still, but they don't know it's watered down by 25%. Exactly. I get where you're going with this. And so I, I wonder the same thing too, because I do feel so good off of such a small amount right now. Um, but I also wonder too, this is, uh, this is one of the longest stretches I've ever had since I was in my twenties yeah, of not taking testosterone. Yeah, so your receptors might be just yeah, wide open. Right. Just waiting for it. And because I came from such a bad place of like so low, I was depressed, the Achilles, all that shit. It really challenged me to really dial in my health. Mm -hmm. Like I really, really put a lot of focus on my sleep and the juve light and making sure that I was doing like strength training, the, not over applying intensity and diet was clean. Like. I really put a lot of effort into can I naturally do this myself? You know, vitamin D supplementing. I'm doing all the stuff that I should be. I even ran through a protocol that you gave me way back when with the Tongue Cat Ali and the Ashwagandha. And mm -hmm. so I've done a lot of things consistently for a while now to bring it up naturally. And for that long, for me not to take anything, part of me thinks that my body was just almost reprimed for it again. And that's why it's responding. Now, have you ever run, have you ever done HCG like this before? No. Because they're giving it to you every time. You no. So the, I've used HCG in the past to come off of a, off of a cycle. What they call it post-cycle therapy. Right? Yeah. So that, that HCG used to be part of my post-cycle therapy. You would run it for a few weeks, two to four weeks post-cycle. Now for the listeners, uh, HCG, in fact, that's, that's what a, a, a uh, test, a pregnancy test will pick up in a woman because her HCG levels will go up and it shows that she's pregnant. But in men, it, it, it looks like luteinizing hormones. So when, you, uh, when they give it to men, it tells the body to produce more testosterone and more sperm. And so I think the, the theory is they give it to you with testosterone to keep your, your, your testicles from, from kind of working, atrophying, from not right? shutting down and atrophying, yeah. right? Yeah. And I know if they give you a high enough dose from what I've read, you can, you can, have kids, even though you're on. Uh, oh, it's only like a seven percent. Uh, when you're running HCG with testosterone, so if you run testosterone by itself, I, I forget what the statistics are, but it's a shuts it way down. Yeah, it's a it's it's the statistics of you getting someone pregnant on on you know on consistently taking uh, you know synthetic testosterone is very low. If you're running HCG with it, it's only like 7% less mm. than what it would be if you weren't running anything. That, okay, whatsoever. interesting. Yeah, so it's supposed to be, uh, I mean, and the reason, I knew that before, and I still uh, chose not to because 7%, 7%, 7%. I mean, if I got and If you were waiting a year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We were already, had been trying for a year. I wanted the best chances to, to get her pregnant. And so even though I knew that it would still be 93% chance, it didn't matter. I want as much chance as I could mm. back then. And that's why I'm in a different place okay, now. Okay, so besides feeling good, um, and I'm assuming you mean just more energy and better mood. Yeah. Uh, libido. Oh, That's the big one. I think a lot of the, the number one uh, reported libido side effect that men will get from low testosterone is loss of libido. It's the number yeah. one. In fact, that's why men will often get tested is that's what they'll complain about. Yeah. How, is, is that different? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's uh, that is probably uh, that, to me. It's like the, the, the most obvious thing that I feel out of anything. Like uh, I can't remember the last time that my sex drive felt like it was. Now, luckily, um, Katrina and I have a very healthy relationship. She's beautiful. I'm very attracted to her. And so even during those times when I wasn't feeling it, um, we never go, you know, more than a few days. Like, I right. mean, uh, yeah, that's in our house. That's like a rule. I'm, I'm in trouble if I go <laughs> beyond four or five days. Yeah, I got to have a very good excuse to make it five days without any sex in our house. So, uh, and you know, it's not hard to muster up the energy to have sex with her at all. So, yeah, even even uh, even then. So we, I would say, you know, again, being completely transparent and sharing my personal shit, I was probably having sex on a, a low week, uh, twice. 
uh, on a high week four times most consistently. Well, that's, around. A, that's a lot for, compared to most people. Well, yeah, but I mean, this last week was like six times, you know, so it's, it's very different. Yeah, very, very different. It's a different it, drive, different. Yeah, and, you know, and it, that's two pronged too, because I'm also, you know, I'm like, you know, Katrina che- teases me as being the chick in the relationship where I have to feel sexy about myself and feel good, <laughs> and I tend to want to have sex. So it's all, it's compounding, she right? She tries to have sex with me, like, but you haven't complimenting my hair. Yeah, yet. yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I have chocolates first? I feel, I feel mushy right now, you know. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, I'm tired. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so I'm definitely that way, right? So, and and so it's probably compounding. Not only is it obviously increasing uh, my libido, right? But in addition to that, I'm also I haven't been this consistent training and diet, you know, uh, for a long time either. So I think the combination of that, I'm I'm really feeling all those things, you know. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm, I, you know, I, I, again, this is something that is, uh, if testosterone is the male hormone, and if it's low, you're not going to feel like yourself, you, you know, mm-hmm. and, there, and, and you have to have a certain level to be healthy. And if you go above that, you have problems. If you go below that, you have problems. I always, I always knew there was a very good chance because of what I had experimented with in the past that there, that I could potentially, absolutely, you know, be on hormone therapy as as, as I get into my forties, right? So, and people asked a lot, right? Like when we first would talk about this when I was going through it, I would always get, you know, are you going to get on testosterone again? Are you? Are you? Are you? And at that time, I was like, probably, probably, but I didn't know when I would. I really wanted to give it a fair shot of me truly trying to see what I could do naturally. Uh, before I decided to go down now, the road. Now, I- I- any reason why you chose or why they chose injection versus cream or patch or anything like that? I mean, I know I've done my research, so I know kind of the difference, but any any particular reason for you? Well, I think injection is supposed to be the best, right? Yeah. I mean, so- and obviously, I don't have a problem with needles. So, <laughs> I mean, I've, I've, I've already done testosterone, so yeah. and, I've, and I've given it to myself. So having a, a nurse inject testosterone in me, I definitely don't feel- Yeah, because from what I've read, the creams, uh, people can have a tough time getting their testosterone levels up to a certain level with them. And then there's transfer. Have you guys heard this? Hmm. So if you rub this oh, cream yeah. on yourself- Remember, that's, oh. what the cross, oh. that's what the CrossFit girl oh, tried to that's claim. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was yeah, her yeah. argument. You, yeah. you could go hug your wife, or it gets on the bed, and then your baby play in the bed, and next thing you know, it's like, why does Max have a mustache? <laughs> you know, I mean, this yeah. is a real thing. Just spreading testosterone yeah. everywhere. Yeah, and there's also the, there's a patch, I believe, but from what I've read, the injection is still the best. The, the downside is it's an injection. A lot of guys don't want to have to. Yeah, no. Do if you're, that. I guess if you're really scared of that stuff, then that, then I would consider that. But I'm not. I mean, I I know that that's the purest, cleanest, best way to do it, and so it wasn't even an option for me. It's like, of course, I'm gonna. I've go seen that route. huge guys like get really scared of a little <laughs> needle. <laughs> it's it's pretty embarrassing. Well, I mean, your your wife's a nurse. Has she yeah. ever told you about? These? She's told me some stories. Yeah, of like trying to get IVs in and they pass you know, having to hold people down and people passing out and yeah, all that stuff. Like she's had to go through all kinds of issues with that. Especially with like big guys, dude. Like, I, I knew a guy. I who, don't like to give blood. I will give you that though. That really? I, yeah. That for some reason, I, that still. I mean, I'm. Do you have fine. to like look away. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah. have to look away. Yeah, I don't like I to almost look. Passed out one time just watching her like, go really? in and then seeing the blood come out. Me too. Like, oh. Me too. I got lightheaded. It only took. It only took <laughs> I, one. It I took to one. Yeah. It took one bad experience for me, and it was one of the first times that I, I had blood. That I it was. I think he was doing a blood drive or. Dude, doing. I would do it to myself. I'm I don't like, care. Like, oh really? It's coming up. Doesn't bother me at all. I think it looks cool. Oh no! It totally. I don't. Th- here's the reason why I don't look when they put the needle in because I don't want to anticipate the pick, the feeling of the needle. Yeah, I don't want to tense up. You yeah, know? so it I let her do surprise it. Surprise me! But then I like to look because you know when they, they clip those things on uh-huh. and the blood f- fills it up. Uh, I think it looks cool. Like, oh, look you're look weird, at that. You're weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a little bit weird. Yeah, yeah. Can, I, can I take one of those? But that, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, that, for some yeah. reason. Now, yeah. speaking of handsome, other handsome people, um, Adam, have you noticed anything different about uh, Justin's face? 100% I have. Dude, no, for you, real. You, yes, you guys bro. haven't even complimented me at that, all. We're waiting for We're this. waiting for the commercial. Oh, I'm not going to bring oh, it up. Yeah, yeah dude, it. come on. Dude, I've been lathering myself. I made like a nightly ritual of, of using the Caldera uh, uh, serum. Bro, you look, if you're looking on, if you're watching on YouTube right now, look at his face you do it looks way different i wish dude. you would have done it before Radiant. i wish you would have done it before and taken a picture no lines yeah. no it's just yes. stop making dude. fun it's yeah. for real i know yeah. no i know i i have to make fun of myself because it's like i already started off this year being like oh i have like these aesthetic goals and i'm six pack and i'm gonna beautify my face oh, like, what's happening to me bro now? it's this is this is what happens you, you work with two sales guys for number <laughs> it's true yeah. number number one when yeah. we started the podcast justin's like ah weed i don't really like it that much right love, exactly love, he loves now, now i'm just 
just like an it's, edible it's fiend. Fair, you know? like, what happened? Now it took this long. It was a long one, by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dad's yeah, aesthetics. Gonna get six pack and yeah. beautiful I mean, skin. I might as well look, <laughs> yeah. you know, beautiful on top of everything, right? No, but all joking aside, what's your routine? You just put it on at night before you go to bed. Yeah, that's been it. Uh, just consistency. Like I've been trying to do that every single day. It's been two weeks uh, of straight, consistently applying it. So. Uh, yeah. Well, we noticing. What is Courtney noticing? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's, but she doesn't. Yeah, I don't know, that. man. She's, she's a little bit like we'll we'll ping pong it off. Like, oh, I'm not, you know, working out as much, and I'm not this oh, or it that. Just makes her feel insecure. It's a little <laughs> insecurity there, but uh, can't yeah, get too she, sexy, huh? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We're working through that, but I. Yeah, so, she, she does compliment every now and then. So use it like this the next time. Because we do so much stuff on camera and shit, and I know we shot yesterday, we shot clips yesterday, so the next time we have to shoot clips, mm -hmm. do it right before you shoot clips and then watch your video. Because we were in all the lighting and you can really tell the oh, difference, yeah. and then you can lo look back at other videos. That's what sold me so bad was because I went and watched a video. Like when we first got it in, it was like, oh, let's try this stuff out, whatever, right? Mm hmm and then I remember watching a, one of our videos and my face, and I thought Doug did something different with the lighting. And I was like, oh, shit, that was the day that I put the Caldera on right before. And so that <laughs> was it. That yeah, no, funny. it does. It looks like no, that. No, my skin does feel softer. And like I've noticed, and of course, I've made fun of the fact that I'm dry as an alligator pretty much like 24-7. So <laughs> yeah. this is all new to my skin. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, it's like a sponge. Your skin's like, oh. Oh, thank you. This is beautiful. Dude, yeah. I got to tell you guys Bless a hilarious, you. hilarious story about my. So, you know, obviously, my, my baby boy, he's, uh, he's, yeah, he's only a couple months old, but he is so funny about uh, Jessica's boobs. Oh, yeah. Dude, oh, so funny, bro. <laughs> he's going to be a boob guy. Uh, oh, you have no idea. She sends me a video. I can't show you guys because obviously it has Jessica's boob on sure it. Sure, you can. No, nah, I can't do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. And especially not you, Adam. But yeah, we'll walk out but of this conversation. She'll, she'll breastfeed him, he'll fall asleep, right? And then she'll keep her because she'll lay on the bed or on the couch. So she's kind of laying there. Mm -hmm. And then she'll start to move away. And then he starts to go. <laughs> he's smelling to see he if it's there. It. And then he does this, he does this thing right here. He's he's <laughs> testing with his tongue. If he sees that it's there, he'll stay there. If it's not there, he starts to cry. <laughs> so she sends me these videos of her moving her boob away, and then he's uh, looking with his tongue and then uh, She's yeah. got to like keep it next to him. Like, oh my God, what are we going to do with this kid? Yeah, that's oh, great. You got to be glued to this that's kid all the so time. Great. But it's so funny to see him oh, do that. Oh, that's the treasure right now. <laughs> it's all about it. <laughs> now, does it feel like uh, time is flying for you already? Is it, I mean, you're already uh, past two months right now, yeah. right? Or do you feel Twilight Zone a little bit? Like, how? Uh, what's, what are you going through right no, now? No, I mean, I'm way more involved. Yeah, uh, you talk about that. And, right? and that. so it feels like it's slowing down. So is so there, involved. okay, so because you feel like you're so more involved, are there specific things that, you are making like a habit like that you're doing that maybe you didn't do before or tradition. Like I know I have my own things, right? Of like that I'm like, oh, this I'm really adamant about always doing this. That mm -hmm. I want to I want to build this bond or whatever with him. Are there little things that you're already starting to do that like maybe you didn't do before that you like consistently like every day, this is what I do with Just him? Just more of the care. Like I always love, you know, I always kiss my kids and would always play with them. Yeah, you're a very affectionate father already. Yeah, but it's but the care aspect, the changing the diapers, the changing his clothes, the, you know, making sure he does the right, you know, like tummy time exercise mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff uh, is, it, and you know that that's part of being involved with your kids. I mean, when I first, I, and I, this was a big realization for me with my older kids, when I got uh, divorced, all of a sudden now I had the kids. You know, they would come with me every other week, and I had to do all the things that I didn't do before. I had to make them lunch and make sure that their homework was done and pick them up from school and do these different things. And at first, it was kind of daunting and overwhelming. But as I started doing it, I realized that doing those things is what it makes me a part of their life and I know them better as a result. Whereas mm -hmm. before I looked at it like, oh, these are just chores. Someone takes care of it. Not a big deal. But it's actually an important thing. So even just caring yeah, for- it directly affects them. Totally. Just caring for the baby, you know, changing his diaper, for example, this kind of stuff. Uh, I mean, I've changed more diapers now than I did with my first two, for sure. Oh, um, like total? Oh, yeah. Like I, I barely ever changed diapers before. I was the happy, fun play dad and then, oh, poop, pass them on. Yeah. Uh, now I'll do more. I mean, Jessica still handles most of it, but yeah. I do more. It gets a lot stinkier. It's they, <laughs> Yeah, that, that's when the yeah. food comes in. They yeah. change, don't they? Now, was oh, there yeah. a learning curve? Were you bad at it? Uh, are you are you not so good at it, or are you good right away? Um, I'm okay. I mean, I, I think I'm good. I mean, you have to ask Jessica uh, <laughs> and see what she says. Yeah, she always calls out your bullshit. Yeah. On this. yeah, you know what's funny, dude, is uh, you know when you change a boy's diaper, if you don't point their oh, yeah. their penis in the right direction, yeah, the pee's coming out. Dude. Oh yeah, 
you have to point. You, you got to do a false one too, because even the the cold air no, will you get throw it. To, it psh, you so you go up and you then you th- go back down and they piss in it. You throw a wiper. You throw a towel over it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right before. Yeah, that, as soon as I as soon as I pull diaper off, you just it, it's just like a habit for me. I just drop something over the top of it, and then you do your thing, and then right before you close it up, you pull. Dude, you pull my son off. makes. They a, actually make a. They actually make a pee cone for boys. They for call them. it a t- PPTP. <laughs> Is that what it is? A PPTP. PPTP. Yeah, yeah. They actually make them. Like that. But you mean you just we just use like a little. I know. Yeah, we have a PPTP. Yeah, just throw a freaking wiper. Over. They now, I mean, that's what's crazy is the the amount of money that's in like every so many products now that yes. like didn't exist. We yeah. have a wipe warmer. Yeah, what? we yeah. have a wipe we, we have, warmer. We have one too. Now, when I first when I first heard about these, it's like, it's cool though. Bro, hold on, because it's that's yeah. necessary. Well, right, hold on. So yeah. when they first came out with these, and and we you know Jessica talked about, I'm, I thought to myself like. Am I going to spoil my kid that much? I can't wipe his ass with a fucking room temperature, you know, wipe. It's got to be warm. Like, come on. But you know what happens when you change your diaper in the middle of the night? You put a cold wipe on them, it wakes them up. Oh, yeah. Uh, So it makes sense. You bathe them in a gold bath. Yeah. (laughs) You do all that stuff. (laughs) Sprinkle. You get a drone to kind of fly down and, you know, change Now, you know, that's a great example. Is there anything that you've come across that you feel is a little ridiculous or over the top that that you guys use or that you've received yet? It's really about making your own life easier, all the stuff. So I'm, I'm open. (laughs) For all <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Open for any hack because yeah. it's really okay. Yeah, he likes it too, but actually, really, he just it helps uh, me. Yeah, he yeah. <laughs> you know buys me like ten minutes of sleep. Yeah, yeah. Oh. he makes this face though when he's about to pee or go to the bathroom. It's hilarious. I can tell now. So I'll be playing with them or whatever. And I'll be like, "Oh, you're you're about to poop, aren't you?" And then you hear, you know, yeah. did you did you see the story that I posted of of him? And then I know so the guy made the guy who's running the meme page made the made the funny. I'm praying over my son or whatever. Oh, oh yeah. So this is his thing right now, right? And I'm oh, it's I'm such a sucker for it right now. Is he? He can feel when, and and it, I, I'm worse at it, right? So Katrina's better at putting him down than I am because she puts him down before he's fully asleep, and then she can get him to kind of settle down. Where I like to rock him till she's he's asleep because me leaning over into the crib, he feels that that distance. Mm-hmm. Like, and I, mm-hmm. I try to explain that to her. I'm like, you know, me when I go over the crib and come down, he can feel the instability where she can stay tight and close and bring him down to the thing. It's mm-hmm. like closer for her. Mm-hmm. And he goes right in and no problem. So when he feels- Oh, because he's off your body. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm so long and I'm so tall and the crib is so low. So I'm like, when I'm extending him out from me, he feels that instability and he like, you feel him lock in on my finger or grab something. So then when I lay him down, he will put like a death grip on my hand. And if I try and pull it away, he'll pop up Mm -hmm. and he'll wake up. So I got to like, so that picture is me like- Laying there, you know, for like five or ten minutes for him. <laughs> I've done that so many yeah, times. For him to I, for him to like slowly do I it. Remember and, that. And it's like this. Just like just, just Bro, you become a ninja. Yeah, like yeah. slowly inching out or like tricking him by like rubbing his back while I'm pulling out at the same time, right? So, <laughs> yeah. like, so I have all these slight like, of hand. Yeah. And every once in a while <laughs> you rock him way out here before you even get there. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do this, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Ooh, all the way down, right? So he will he sometimes I can get it and I get out and I'm away and fine, but sometimes He'll feel me pull away, and he doesn't cry. He just he instantly stands up, and then you know it's pitch black in that room, so he's reaching for me, mm-hmm. and then he grabs around my neck. And that 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 photo, Katrina took that while I was in there. I didn't know that, and he uh, he stood up and he like nuzzled his his you know his 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 face oh, and his yeah, mouth you're fucked, in my neck. Now you're That'll yeah. get you. And he's like squeezing. You want to come to bed with daddy? <laughs> oh man! I, so I did. That's exactly what I did. did you really? So that that what nobody knows, right? Is right after that video, I carried. Him, I picked him up, and then I was like, "And then oh, he, you're reinforcing bad." Oh yeah, right, <laughs> totally. So I went. Oh, here's the thing. So Whatever, I'm the, it doesn't last that long. I'm the stickler on that, right? Yeah. So I'm the stickler on on the, the like the rules and not enforcing this or that. But I'm also the one to break it occasionally. And Katrina's always like, "You're so. Uh, what are you doing?" And I'm like, "Well." You know, sometimes it's okay. You know, this is the one time it's okay right now. But like, I say so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm so yeah. du- I'm so double standard about it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, yeah. hey, we got to teach him. You got to let him cry. Yeah. Do this stuff like that. You're but not then, consistent enough. Yeah, yeah. Then he has those moments when he does it. Be like, oh, okay, okay. Dude, Jessica, this one time. This Jessica one time. will do that. She'll be like, listen, the kids, they, they haven't been very healthy. This has to happen. This has to happen. She'll do that. And then all of a sudden she'll come home. And she'll be like, hey, kids, and, you know, Who chocolate. Wants pizza? Yeah. And I'm yeah, like, cookies. wait a minute, what's going on here? Yeah. Why'd you just do that? You know, yeah. it's hard. It's totally tough. But it doesn't yeah. like, la- that's a good point, Justin. It doesn't last that long. It doesn't. Yeah. So it's like, you got to embrace it like and enjoy it while it's there. Cause like, I, I like hearing you talk about this is like totally brings me back to like it being in the rocking chair and like I would fall asleep, you know, and then like it was just, but I loved every minute of it, you know, thinking like, back. I yeah, love thinking back. <laughs> I love it too. Like, I, you know, and that's why I try to tell her all the time. 
time. She's like, why are you, why are you in there for 20, 30 minutes? I'm like, oh, you know, like, I don't want to forget these moments. Mm-hmm. Like, I really don't. Like, I, I'm very mindful of that while I'm in it. Like, I know that I'm, I'm sitting here rocking it's, him. It's hard. And that though, like, in a couple years, it'll never be like this again. It's and, hard, though, when yep. you're so sleep deprived. Like, right now, the baby's going through a growth spurt or something. He's eating, like, on the dot. Every hour and a half, two hours, he's eating. And he seems to be just growing. And Jessica is just so sleep deprived. It's mm-hmm. it's it's borderline comical. <laughs> like she's like she'll lose her shit and then she'll stop and be like, "Wow, I'm I'm mm-hmm. uh, I, I need some sleep." Dude, I have but no I guess- idea how to transition out of this. But um, like so totally random. We've been watching a lot of like uh, nature stuff and and uh, like these documentaries and things on uh, Nat Geo, I think. But uh, I saw this one freak incident so uh this guy well two incidents actually one of them involved this guy was basically uh uh they caught on video he was getting out of the semi truck and all of a sudden he spontaneously combusted so you've heard of spontaneous combustion i have that's been something they've talked about for centuries and i always i always like does that really happen that's when god is like yeah right like you just you just (laughs) you're gonna die just all of a sudden you just like burst into flames and that literally happened to that guy and he was just bursting into flame his friend jumps out trying to pat him down but his whole body was on fire how it happened they don't know how it happened and uh, I, I think that um, – so this next one actually was kind of bummed because it was a little bit – like they, they said that it was staged, uh, so there was some shenanigans with it. But then I, I went down this rabbit hole of it. So they, they showed this guy who was uh, walking down the street, and it was like a dark uh, – somebody's camera that was like outside uh, filming this and got struck by lightning. And so you see him get struck by lightning, and then he's kind of stumbling around. And he keeps walking, gets struck again. What? And you're like twice, and then like later on, like you kind of find out that like one of them was kind of bullshit. But uh, what what I saw after that, then they showed his his arm, and he had these patterns. And it was like it was like a fern, you know, like um, all the uh, what's that. Uh, um, uh, geometry that uh, is like fractal geometry, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. So like it, it follows that that sort of like uh, leafy kind of fern pattern. So when they get they get these burns that go all the way down their their skin uh, from like uh, lightning victims. Yeah, people will get weird weird yeah. patterns. What, do you, what is it? Lichting lichting burn. What are you uh, watching? Patterns. What is it? Uh, I don't remember the name of it. It was like shocking uh, uh, incidents. So, so remember how I told you guys a while ago when I was a kid, I used to read these uh, books on. There was like a whole series of books on weird stuff, like mm-hmm. Loch Ness monster, Bigfoot. There was a book on spontaneous combustion. Really? Yes, it, and I read it. And there are cases where, for example, I don't remember where this happened, but there was this lady that caught fire. She just caught fire in her apartment. That just where she sat caught fire because after she was done, her body was incinerated. Her shoes were still there, so her shoes were left. Her rings on her fingers were still on the couch. Couch was fine. House was fine. Everything was fine. Just her. Just her. Just caught just fire. Ashes. And, yeah, and there's a picture of it. You could probably find it somewhere on. Oh, those are the burn marks from the. Oh, this is the from, yeah. from lightning strikes. Yeah, that's a real thing. Look at that. You get a cool tattoo. It's afterwards. kind of cool. I mean, it's it's. Uh, I mean, I hate to say it, but yeah. it looks pretty badass. Well, okay, and then uh, there's been stories for long periods of time where there would be like a ball of light that would fly through the air and do weird things, and people would say, "Oh, it's spirits. It's whatever." Yeah. Do you know what it is? Ball lightning. Oh, do you ball know that lightning. that's a real thing? Yeah, no. Dude. Ball lightning is a real thing, where it's literally a ball of lightning that flies through the air. And it's just hovering across. Yeah, yeah. I've seen that video. Put ball lightning up there and uh, and and click on images. I hope nothing weird. You pulls. guys, <laughs> you guys watch and read some weird shit. Dude. I'm into it, man. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. you know, the freakier the better. Yeah, like a weird ball of lightning just flying through the air. Isn't that weird? What? Yeah, it's kind of cool. That it? Yeah, that's the one I've seen where it goes across the train tracks. Now, Doug, put which on, I thought was BS, but it turns out it was legit. Doug, put spontaneous combustion up. So ball lightning is still theorized. Like they're trying to figure out like if it's real, or a lot of people say it is real, and or how some does it work? Weird optical illusion. Yeah, Doug, look up spontaneous combustion and then put images, and I and I bet we're gonna see that picture. Oh, there you go, spontaneous human combustion right there. And I bet you're gonna see a picture of the of the couch that I was telling you about. Oh, oh right there with the yellow the yellow couch. That's not the one, but that's weird yeah. right there. Oh, there's one right there with the, with the leg is just left and the rest of the body was incinerated. Oh. Those it's, look fake. 
Uh, maybe, huh? I don't Those know. I look saw, hella fake. I saw when I was a kid, so maybe it's... <laughs> Dude, it looks like it... That looks fake as shit. Yeah, yeah just, I don't know. Like, oh, no, up, up, up. That's what I've always thought. That it's one, been like a, some kind of wi- right there. wives tale or like some kind of legend, you know? What does that say, Doug? Yeah, in 1982, Jenny Safin eventually ra- wrapped into flames while sitting on a chair. Her father, who was a witness of this incident, said she he saw a flash of light and uh, she covered in, was covered into flames. Oh, man. That's, yeah, that's, <laughs> there's a way to go, right? That's when it's time to die. So, well, I'm done. There's yeah. nothing you can do about it. <laughs> that is weird. Just burst into flames. Yeah, I would hate to die that way because then everybody, it's, I feel like everybody would know, like, I fucked up. Yeah, you oh. got you got smited. You know? <laughs> Especially well, if you got struck twice by lightning. Oh yeah, definitely smited. Then. Well, while you guys are watching weird stuff, I was watching the uh, new documentary on Tiger Woods that just came out. So good, mm-hmm. HBO. Oh, yeah, that's yeah it's on, on my it's list. A, it's, I think it's a well, it's at least a two parter because uh, I know the the other half is not. In so two. so real quick, because um, I'm not super familiar with what got him in a bunch of trouble. Right. He explain golf. He. <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> He let's start from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. He would take Ambien with hookers, and then he'd have sex with them. Right? They try not to. Fall okay, away so we them. haven't we haven't oh, that's got the fun part. So that's part two, right? So this did all his childhood stuff. Okay, like so he is just now uh, he's won the Masters and he's starting to become like super famous. His dad, since he was little, like you know, proclaimed that he was going to just like be uh, like Gandhi like uh-huh. he would, that he was going to be so important to our society as far as like what he's going to do for sports. Wow. Yeah, so he he's been saying that since he was like a little kid and shit. And there's there's was he t- tyrannical like you know a lot of these other dads <coughs> yeah. that get way too involved totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, he totally Yeah, you want a superstar kid just being a shitty dad, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> you, well, you know what I didn't Well, I mean, so Originally, he wasn't painted that way. Like it, it wasn't until later did st- more stuff start to come mm-hmm. out. Like originally, uh, everybody like loved him. You know, he's a Green Beret. You know, Vietnam War hero dude. Like everybody said, and he's mm-hmm. he's very uh, when he presents himself on television and stuff. You would you would know. Um, and, and he loves Tiger, and he go they go into that right. Like he's definitely got a love for his son. It's not like mm-hmm. it, it's coming from the, a good place, uh, but it obviously didn't manifest into that. And then some of the things they did, the thing that I didn't know, because um, I, I you know, followed Tiger Woods and and know most of his story. Uh, what I didn't know and connected to the question that you were just alluding to, Sal, with is like what happened with because like he, I can't remember. They found like you know three hundred different like hookers and and girls that he was sleeping with while he was married and you know of course you know that went through the news and he got just destroyed for that well it makes a lot of sense when you see the way he was raised like he had no time like there was teachers and stuff that were trying to ask like oh he should he wants to play baseball or he wants to his dad would like you know golf is everything golf is everything and he used to take him on this uh, Navy base uh, golf course that he had access to, him and another guy. And this guy is the one telling the story and kind of laying this out. And he used to, uh, and this is like when he's like a, a you know junior high entering high school, so he's young. He's a young man, and his dad was you know cheating on his mom like every day while they're out there golfing. He used to drive a Winnebago to the golf course. What? And like in front of his son, take girls into the Winnebago and, and have sex with them. So he'd park the Winnebago. Wow. All right, son, go have a good training. And you I'll, wonder where these bad behaviors came from. Yeah, I'll be yeah. here. You know the rule if you see a tie hanging around the doorknob. hundred percent. Like that. Wow. Yeah. And it, it did that through his whole childhood. And his and dad was probably his hero. His, his so big time. He and looked it, up to his dad. Big bad time, behavior. Big time, big time. Wow. And, yeah. So then you, you, you hear that and you see that and then, you know, you have a little empathy for the guy because I think when obviously when that news came out it was like how could he cheat on a model and they, they, this and that and he's and we held it we all like we always do hold these famous people and athletes on pedestals mm-hmm. and then he falls from that pedestal and then we just we destroy him uh, what a bad person he is and then you see how this poor kid grew up you know where he was completely sheltered from from the world and forced into doing just nonstop yeah. golf and then the only outlet that he sees is his dad you know banging random girls on the golf course while he's out there teaching and him that's stuff. his hero yeah and that's who he looks up to oh that's like, terrible like man i mean he could have been worse i mean i'm not excusing what he did but he could have been worse at least he wasn't violent you know and, and hurting anybody that, yeah, he- that happens you know with a lot of some of these athletes they do some pretty bad like violent shit yeah um i mean he wasn't great but at least he 
wasn't that, you know. Yeah, no, mm-hmm. just a lot of pressure is what he did. That's all. Oh, oh that's crazy. But yeah. yeah, I read this. I read that it was like a, that was their drug of choice was Ambien, which was I don't know. We'll thing. see. That's next. So next Sunday yeah. is part two huh. on HBO, and we'll see what uh, we'll see what uh, all because I actually didn't dive that much into that. I knew like a little bit of it. Like mm-hmm. it, I don't get into celebrity drama and all that stuff. So uh, I do know he got you know definitely blasted you know for a while. I also it's a, such a mistake to and just such human nature, right? Somebody's really good at one thing, I know, and we naturally turn them into an angel. Yeah. So somebody's a good singer, a good actor, a good athlete, a good whatever, and because they're so talented in one area, we it's not it's again natural. It's human nature. We paint them as this incredible person Mm -hmm. but the reality is they're good at something yeah and but they could be totally shitty and everything else or just like all of us which is flawed right we're all yeah there's a a term for it what's it called it's called uh what is a term doug for that when we we idolize athletes or we make them we glorify them when they're it is called it's not uh, for some reason god complex keeps jumping in my head but that's doctor shit that's not that uh there's a term for it i've said it on the podcast before but it's very, very common. We mm. do that with with famous people all the time. Mm. Oh, I got good news. I got, I got to bring this up uh, for you, Justin. Ooh. Because uh, you know how you drink coffee all the time? I I know this, yes. <laughs> In fact, I think you're the first person I know who drinks coffee post-workout as well as pre-workout. I'm going to make this a thing, Yeah. Uh, uh, by the way. So two things about that. Okay. By, okay. Post-workout caffeine increases insulin sensitivity. So it could help with replenishing glycogen faster, by the way. So Boom. If you have your coffee- There's post, benefits. You have some caffeine post-workout with some carbs, it could speed that up. Okay. So there's that. But here's another thing. Read a study that men who drink uh, three or more cups of coffee a day had uh, significantly lower rates of prostate cancer. Yeah. So it's good <laughs> oh, for- That's all the information I need, it's good. So. It's good for- the, <laughs> I was going to ask you how your prostate was doing. <laughs> yeah, it's- but I, no, yeah, no more fingers, none of that uh, stuff. So yeah, I'm, I've been good. Plural. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I mean, how many fingers? Whoa, have been there? whoa. I, mean, I told you guys about like my doctor visit. That's what I'm referring to. Yeah, uh, but he used uh, one, didn't yeah. he? You're right. It was just <laughs> one. Just, right, no more, just to be clear, no more fingers. Felt like two. <laughs> no one. more. Fi- yeah. Hey, by the way, did you guys hear uh, Greenfield had uh, COVID? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you see? So I talked. What's to his him. protocol? He had he had a crazy protocol. So I, I talked to him. Right, he got COVID. Him and his wife, and he said, I asked him like, what are the symptoms? What, what happened? Are you okay? Is everybody all right? And he goes. Oh, we had the sniffles for a couple days and it was gone. So he had like a super mild case. But here's his protocol. I saved it because, you know, Ben. Ben oh, is, yeah. Ben's, uh, I'll, you know, he, he'll he takes, break it down on a molecular level. I, ben is who I, I posted a meme of uh, uh, Chuck Norris with COVID. You know, <laughs> did you see that one? Yeah, Where it's yeah. like, you know, Chuck Norris got COVID. COVID is on, uh, <laughs> COVID's out on for two weeks. Support, yeah, yeah, yeah. some shit like that. I imagine. He, he ran a marathon I, once because yeah, it was yeah, on the way. Right, right. I imagine yeah. Ben Greenfield as, as like Chuck Norris of, yeah. of COVID yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, he didn't get COVID. COVID got Ben Greenfield. Yeah, yeah. So right. here's what he did. He did, uh, and I'm not saying this is what you should do. This is literally what he wrote in his, uh, on his Twitter. So as soon as he had symptoms, he did 4,000 IUs of vitamin D a day, three Three 2,000 IUs of vitamin C a day, so three times a day, 2,000 uh, IUs of vitamin C a day. Zinc, glutathione, nebulized silver H2O2, so I guess he was breathing that in. Ozone water, plus he took the peptides BP, uh, BPC157 and TB500 TA1, and he repeated this for three consecutive days and then he goes, and that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just picking up at Walgreens. Yeah, that's a yeah. lot of stuff right no there. Big deal. Yeah, very interesting. I saved it though, just in case. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? You know? No, well, that's the, that's the guy, dude. I would follow that protocol. protocol myself for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Our first caller is Oliver from Michigan. What's up, Oliver? How can we help you? What's your question? Hey, what's going on, guys? Um, so I've been running Maps Anabolic, the at-home mod, for about nine weeks now. Um, and I'm just looking, uh, for ways to improve my deadlift form and was wondering if there's any specific trigger section or, uh, body weight exercises that might help me out there. Oh, great question. First off, mm. how's uh, your, cause we, for maybe people listening don't know this, but we put, uh, dumbbell only, ver- uh, you know, modifications in most of our programs so people could do them at home with just dumbbells. How's that working for you, by the way, otherwise in the, the past nine weeks? Uh, it's been great. Um, you know, the programming has really allowed me to make some gains uh, while being at home. Uh, it's also helped with just connectivity and uh, slowing things down and uh, working on form as well. Excellent. Now, what, now in your deadlift, where do you feel like you have the problem? 
Uh, I would say keeping my shoulders rolled back. Uh, the hip hinge, not so much an issue, but keeping my shoulders rolled back uh, is a little bit harder, especially without the bar. Okay. So a couple things I would recommend. One is uh, to do prone cobra as a priming movement before you do your deadlift. So prone cobra, if you're not familiar with the exercise, we have it on our Mind Pump TV YouTube channel. But it's phenomenal for what you're talking about, a scapular retraction. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing I would recommend is to do uh, one-legged deadlifts yes. with your shoulders uh, pinned back. That'll really uh, help you out. Okay. I just was answering literally a similar question on the forum this morning. So that single leg deadlift is exactly what I recommended. So I, I, that's the way I go. I love, uh, and I don't know if all of you have gone through my Instagram, but I was posting that for a while, probably, I don't know, last year sometime. So if you go back enough uh, videos, you can see me, uh, you know, showing the technique of it. But uh, it's tough. It's a, it's a challenging exercise to get good at. But once you get good at it, you'll see some serious carryover into your deadlift. Definitely. Cool. Uh, thanks guys. I appreciate it. No problem, ma'am. Thanks for calling in. No problem. Take care. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of people don't realize that if they get good at a single legged deadlift with weight, their normal deadlift is going to skyrocket. I noticed that myself. It's like, uh, I didn't think I would have that much carryover, but it's pretty remarkable. Yeah. It's interesting. It reveals a lot of the imbalances, especially, uh, when you, when you do it with one leg and that's what I love about that. And two, to, to bring those shoulders back and everything I didn't bring up, but you know, just our wall test is, is great for that as well to, to work on. Oh, I, I think everybody needs a little hip strength and, and stability. And I just think that there's, that's one of the best movements for it. And, I don't care what level you're at. I can regress that all the way down for a 70-year-old woman that's doing it or somebody who's a 25-year-old athlete that can like lift, you know, 400 plus pounds on a deadlift. You can make that exercise extremely difficult and you can make it and you can regress it enough to where you can do it with somebody who's very uh, old. Exactly, mm -hmm. but yeah, that uh prone cobra has got to be one of the more underrated movements. I don't ever oh, really see anybody do it, but what a great movement for people especially for posture and just to activate that mid back yeah especially to prime right before you go to do that totally our next caller is gabriel from florida hey what's up gabe i feel like we know you yeah uh maybe <laughs> <laughs> what's going on buddy what's happening guys how you guys doing good, good man. Good, man what you got for us what's your question all right perfect so here's my question so there's usually like a a checklist, a prerequisite of things you want to take care of before, if you want to do a movement like a, like a snatch, right? Like, so there's some mobility checkpoints that you want to just uh, make sure you cover. Uh, my question is, is there anything for like a sprint? I might be, you know, overanalyzing this, but I feel like I want to do a sprint, but I'm not too sure if I'm, if I'm there yet to do such an explosive movement. Okay. Um, well, let's get a little bit more specific here, Gabriel. For you in particular, um, number one, are you looking for injury reduction or performance enhancement? Because there's two, you can do it kind of two different ways. And then number two, where do you notice the issues in your body when you run or sprint? Or do you notice any yeah. issues? Uh, so first off, it would be for performance. It wouldn't be for uh, rehab or anything. I do want to just uh, implement uh, sprinting to my uh, routine. Anytime I try to get on a treadmill, do cardio, it actually turns into a sprint because I could just get a, either bored or, or I don't know, something. Um, so I do want to incorporate that, but I want to do it the right way. Last time I did uh, win a full-out sprint, I want to say about 30, 40 yards. I noticed uh, it really sore like in my right butt to be honest with you. So I'm just not too sure if it's, if I'm even, or if I'm just uh, doing it the right way, because I know that when you take an explosive movement, you just want to make sure you're, you got your bases covered. With sprinting, mm -hmm. I would, I would start from the, the ground up, right? So I'd look at uh, the way your feet are striking on the ground, your ankle mobility, your, your foot and, and uh, foot strength and control, your ankle stability. I would look at that first, because even if you're feeling things in the hips or the low back or working your way up the kinetic chain, most likely it's stemming from what's going on with the way you're impacting the ground. So when it comes to running, that's the first place I'm going to look at and address and yep. assess. So I'm sure, I know you have most of our programs. Do you have Prime Pro? Yep, I do. Yeah, so I would work on the, the toes and feet and ankle, work in that area first, and then work your way up the body. And most things that are stemming from are stemming from the feet. I appreciate so if this. I'm looking at my feet, if I'm recording, like I, I would probably record myself, I guess, running towards the camera. Am I looking for something, some kind of deviation? If I'm like, for instance, if my feet are collapsing or 
or any kind of way? Like, what am I looking for? Yeah, I would say you're what you're really looking for, not, not to get too technical, um, but if what you're really looking for is a difference between the right and the left side. But ankle proper ankle mobility should help either way, but do it in a more dynamic fashion, right? So you know how normal combat stretch, you get into the position and you activate while, and you hold that position for a second. Yep. But before doing explosive movement, it might be a little bit more dynamic. You move into the position, activate, and then move out, and then move into it, activate, and then move out. The second thing for performance, believe it or not, studies will show that doing a few sets of a heavy exercise before a sprint actually increases speed. So, and I don't, this is not at a high intensity, but let's say you were to get, uh, you know, uh, some dumbbells, bring them to the track, and you did five kind of heavy ish squats, and then you waited about a minute, and then you sprinted. Um, studies mm -hmm. will show that that can actually increase someone's uh, explosive power uh, as well. Yeah, I appreciate this question a lot because a lot of people don't even consider that. How many explosive movements have you done besides running and sprinting? Uh, so I like a box jump. Like I can go to maybe j just below my rib cage mm -hmm. uh, of, as far as height. So I can do those. I can do that. I mean, like if you want to, if you want to consider that. Yeah, I would just consider like maybe implementing in your programming a bit more a uh, variety of explosive movements that you get more repetition with and you can build up that sort of resilience with your joints uh, to be able to handle that kind of a stress. Uh, just to, to get the, the response of the fast twitch muscles uh, takes a lot. It exposes a lot of imbalances and things that uh, will reveal themselves to you. So, uh, you know, to do those in short bouts and really like, you know, focus on the reps of, uh, you, you know, like short bouts, even like with a, uh, a sled and, and being able to be a little more explosive with, you know, driving the sled forward will help a lot. I'm going to keep going back to the ankle and foot stuff. Uh, Gabe, you have your phone on you? Uh, I do. I, sh I shouted this guy out on the show the other day, and I don't think this episode has aired yet. So check this dude out. I, I really like the content that he puts out. I think it's a great place for you to like practice a lot of the movements that he has on there. His Instagram handle is uh, Real Game Period Athletics. And it's it's all body weight, explosive movements, and he's all about technique. Uh, and there's a lot of foot and ankle stability and explosiveness in there. I think there's a really there's a lot of really good exercise. I've been trying to get him out here to get on the YouTube channel so we can share some of his content. Yeah, another guy would be Joe DeFranco. Yeah. You know, there was some controversy a while ago because Joe, Joe DeFranco talked about how driving a sled would improve someone's speed in the sprint, and everybody, a lot of people disagreed with him. Well, it turns out he was totally right. Studies actually showed that driving a sled uh, would improve somebody's sprint speed. So that's something else you can do. Um, now, you guys are both kind of addressing performance stuff, where right? He's asking prerequisite stuff. That's the reason why I keep going back to yeah. like, yeah. I mean, if to me, like what everything that boys are saying right now, I 100% agree with like to improve your sprinting. But if, they're, if you're talking about prerequisites and what there might be a breakdown or dysfunction, I'm looking at the feet. And Sal said earlier, like, very there's normally a discrepancy between left or right if you go through prime pro and you do all the all the tests you'll probably notice one side will be more challenged than the other address that side that's more challenging and focus on that and then i'd be doing exercises to really strengthen and work on the mobility in my ankle and in my feet okay yeah yeah i'll make sure to do that and it's funny that you bring up the sled sal because when you mentioned doing a heavy uh, exercise beforehand i was going to ask if uh, using a sled would be best to do so. So I am going to just uh, take out the sled and just maybe do some heavy pulls or pushes uh, prior to doing a uh, a sprint. Um, and, and then my question will be to, to Justin, a follow-up. He mentioned doing other explosive movements. Are there any recommendations for an explosive movements that I can add to um, add repetitions? Yeah. Um, basically, if, if you're going to emulate a sprint, I would do those in like, have you ever done liners or do short bouts where uh, you, you do it in a controlled way where we're just going to run and sprint and then stop and, uh, you know, and like make uh, make that uh, specificity uh, a priority in terms of the mechanics of the running. So to, to get off, work on the, the start, uh, add a rubber band uh, to your belt so you have some resistance when you pull forward, uh, basically do some slam ball. Uh, there's a lot of different things you can do with medicine balls to add explosivity. There's, there's ice skaters. Yeah, there's, ice. yeah, there's lots of stuff. Like you, you mentioned box jumps, uh, you know, you mentioned, uh, so just, just thinking along those lines in terms of, uh, moving very quickly, but under control. I love ice skaters okay. and doing them like barefoot. 
So really work on the foot and ankle stuff that I keep talking about and then doing things like ice skaters where you're doing them barefoot. And again, the idea when you're doing this to work on mechanics, it's not about how much weight or how many reps you could do. It's about perfecting the movement and just making it look extremely fluid and beautiful on both sides. That's the reason why I recommended this guy that uh, check out his videos. I mean, I, I think he, he demonstrates so many different exercises that you can be implementing. And then the goal should be to be able to emulate them like yeah. that to where it looks that perfect. If you're firing on all cylinders on, on both sides like that, you're going to be pretty damn well, good. Well, and, it's, and it's, he's, he's a great example of being able to add like a lot of acceleration, but also the same amount of intensity on deceleration. So both of those in combination is what's going to give you the best mechanics. All right, perfect. I appreciate it. No problem, man. And thanks for your support, brother. Always appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Have a good one, Gabe. Uh, yeah. Well, le least I can do. Right on, man. Yeah, that's a really that's a very uh, nuanced question to try mm -hmm. and help somebody with. Mm -hmm. um, personally, I and I, mean, I kind of know Gabe, right? So we, he, I've been on his podcast, and he's been listening to Mind Pump for a really long time. So I kind of have somewhat of an idea of his fitness level, and I just feel like before the por performance recommendations come in, I think addressing like foot ankle stability strength yeah. and hip first getting that all really well and oh, then yeah. implementing those yeah. things because you know i think this is a classic example of you know you're, he's not a serious athlete he's just a he's a fit guy who's into working out and improving himself improving himself and then wanting to jump right into like the athletic performance type of stuff uh when, when i know he's older he's not a young kid you know what i'm saying like he's probably got a lot of stuff to work on first yeah and i try to take it a little bit further make sure people know like you know if you're gonna go ramp to a hundred uh you know if you're out there like running and you want to get into sprinting really like gradually work your way up to a hundred percent so it's you know it, it's scales it's it's 50 it's 60 yeah. it's 70 you want to like ramp that intensity up so you know your body Body can respond appropriately because that's a lot of stress all at once that could you know end up an injury you know who else has a lot of really good stuff and he did it during uh, his rehab of his achilles is our good friend uh cory Sle schlesinger yeah cory schlesinger has some good stuff and what's his handle it's school of strength or i always mess up or stress uh uh, uh, slash strength. Slash strength. That's what mm -hmm. it is. Sorry. Yeah. And I mean, I did ask him if it was performance or, you know, that he was interested in. He did say performance, but here's the deal. If, no, if he you didn't have say an that. issue, he did. He no, did. no, no, no. You asked him that. He didn't say it was performance. He, he said, said, he said prerequisite stuff. He, yeah. But then when I asked him specifically, he said he wanted to improve his performance. Yeah. But here's the thing. You're both right. And here's the, well, no, here's the <laughs> point. Here's the point I want to make is that people don't realize that moving better and improving your connection mobility will improve your performance. Exactly. Right. So if right, that's right. the issue... Uh, that's then, why I say focus stay focused up. there. You stay focused yeah. on just right. getting better mobility, better ankle stability, better foot strength. That's going to translate into better performance. Right. And it's the place to start. What ends up happening to most people that ask questions like this is you jump right to the stuff that's interesting. Uh, oh, explosive jump boxes and ice skaters and doing like dynamic movements. And you just haven't done. And that, so I thought he answered, asked the question perfect. Like he asked, what are the prerequisites? What are some of the mm -hmm. things before I go get into all these explosive exercises and movements for performance? What are some of the things I should look at? When I think of a, a, a good runner, it starts from their feet. They got great feet connection. They got a great takeoff there. And if they don't, it normally works its way up the connect chain. And they got issues in their knee or their hip or their low back because something's not firing. And the, and the last point too is, you know, if you're really serious about sprinting and running, uh, it, it, they're a good running or sprinting coach is worth their weight in sure, gold. Sure, sure. It's such a technical thing. People don't realize how technical sprinting can be. Um, that if you have somebody who knows what to look for specifically, that's their profession. Mm -hmm. They can make a oh, huge difference. I wouldn't even if a client that was if a client was really serious to sprint, about sprinting and they came to me, I would be the I would be the first to admit like I'm not your guy. I would outsource. Yeah, it's 100%. just like Olympic lifting. It's like yeah, I can give you some basic tips and technique, and I can maybe look at where mm -hmm. there's dysfunction. And help you, but I, I, by no means am I a an expert in that field. And if you're very serious about getting good at it, then I, I agree with you, Sal. Our next caller is Sally from Alabama. Oh, I know why you're all excited, Sally. Did you watch the game last night or what? Um, uh, I went to Auburn. So oh, I really? Oh, <laughs> okay. You went to Auburn, but you work at Alabama. No, yeah, I, I no, I'm a school teacher in Birmingham, Alabama, but I went to Auburn, and I can't. Like my dad went to Auburn, uncle went to Auburn. We're huge oh. learners. So <laughs> I cannot, I cannot 
stand Alabama. So she, <laughs> you're not in the celebration I mode. Love, I do love Deontay Smith, though. I'll give it to him. He's an incredible player. Uh, okay, okay. So, <laughs> that's great. So what's your question? So my question is, um, I'm just trying to work on my physique a little bit, and I've always been into fitness. Um, and it is about, I didn't know if y'all could help me out with this, but sometimes with women they have, and it's not – fat in the lower area it's like protruding abdominals in the lower abdominal section and i've tried i've heard vacuums work i've heard that it's supposedly weak transverse abdominus and i was like do y'all have any advice on that and how you can fix it or is it just something you're kind of stuck with that because i've seemed to always it's just gotten worse as i gotten older Hmm. That's a really, really good uh, question. Sally, are you a mother? I'm not a mother. No, I'm not. So this is more common uh, when women have a baby, mainly because the the, the, the abdominal area stretches and muscles atrophy, in particular the transverse abdominus. But it's not super uncommon. It's actually very common. Just generally, right? Because here's what happens. When you're standing, gravity pushes your organs down, and it pushes out at the, the lower abdominal area. And so it makes... People feel like they have a lower belly pooch and they'll get lean and they say, well, why is this kind of sticking out? And your best bet is to strengthen the muscles that pull in the midsection. You mentioned vacuums. That is a great Mm -hmm. exercise. I would do them on all fours to add a little bit of resistance. But also I would work on doing vacuums while doing core exercises. So normally when you do a crunch or anything else, you're not necessarily pulling the core in. You're just doing the movement. But I would recommend doing that as well to try to pull in the midsection while doing just to kind of tighten things up a little bit. I think this is a two prong too. I think that um, it's an area that we we tend just as humans to store body fat, and it's one of the last places to go. Um, I experienced this when I was competing. It was it tripped me out. I went all the way down to about seven percent body fat, which was really really lean for me. I'd, I'd never seen myself that lean. Uh, yet I still had this like little bottom pooch that I couldn't figure out. It just didn't make sense to me. Um, I was leaner than what I was when I was in high school as a kid, yet I, I have this, this bottom pooch of fat that I can't seem to get rid of. And it took me to put on some muscle, lean out again, put on some muscle, lean out about three times of staying consistent with my training and diet and building and then cutting back down and building before I finally kind of eliminated that. So you add in what Sal is talking about with the TVA and the organs and make sure you're doing that training and then also have a little bit of empathy with yourself. You know, we're all not, you know, 15 year old kids anymore and we've put on some body body fat over the years and that's probably just a stubborn area. And so that's why it's probably makes it seem like it's even worse. So the combination of those two things the transverse abdominus, and then also we store more body fat there. And then just sometimes it just takes mm-hmm. a couple times of leaning out, putting on muscle, leaning back out to really eliminate it all the way. Sally, uh, uh, another question for you. Are you familiar with what an anterior pelvic tilt is? Mm-hmm. Yes, I am. And I have read on that, that that could be a problem with it. And I don't have that. Okay, I've, so- gotten, I've gotten checked on that and I've done multiple in the tests that y'all also recommend. And I do not have that. Okay. At all. Oh, okay. So, um, but I, I, but I also have been, I mean, I've gotten down to as a woman, this was way too low, but I've been 8% body fat and I still have, um, that area that it, 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 it is not, it's definitely not fat. It is just like lower abs that stick out mm. a little bit. And it's only in that lower section. Okay. Now, you mind if I ask you a personal question? Yeah. Do you think you might be a little too harsh on yourself? Um. Yes, I I definitely believe that I, I can't. I, I have struggled with body dysmorphia before and an eating disorder and everything, but that is completely gone. I'm healthy got healthy menstrual cycles and everything, but it is um, like if I was to ever compete or anything like that, that would be an area that uh, I would definitely try to work Hmm. on because it is something that I do believe is, does stick out a little bit and I could improve some way. Okay. So I'm going to go in a little bit of a different direction, Sally. I, I, uh, I myself uh, struggled with body image issues in the past, I don't necessarily believe they completely go away. Um, I think it's always kind of in the background for most of us. I know it is for me. It can rear its ugly head 
every once in a while. And one of the characteristics of uh, you know body dysmorphia or even ha- or even experiencing it in the past and coming out of it is we tend to have this remarkable ability to be super critical of everything about our bodies and we tend to look at ourselves as pieces rather than as a whole and i've done this to myself where i'll look at one part of my body and it doesn't look the way that i want and it's you know i, I can i can focus on it and it becomes very challenging so here's, I'm going to change my advice for you, okay? Because you said a couple things to me that you've, you've been working out for a long time. You got down to 8% body fat, which for, for a man is lean, is shredded. For a woman is, is insanely shredded. So here's my advice to you. Um, and you could take it for all that it's worth. But I would say for you to focus entirely on performance, on strength, on speed, on mobility, and on stamina and completely ignore the aesthetics for a while. I would take your scale. I don't know if you use a scale. Put it in the closet. Stop weighing yourself. And I would stop, if you can, this is a challenging thing to do, but I would stop looking in the mirror and finding things that you need to change or work on and rather take that focus. And this isn't where you want to end up, but this is a great place to move your focus because it does help. It will help or it can help you become a little bit uh, different with this. Change that focus that you have from what you look like to your performance and start just journaling your workouts. Am I stronger? Am I faster? Am I lifting more? How do my joints feel? Do that for about four to five months and just be dogged about it. Be just hard-headed about it. And then four or five months later, go ahead and look at yourself in the mirror and see if you notice anything different. Well, I have, I have one more before. Okay, Sally, are you in our private forum? Am I in what? Are you in our private forum? Uh, no, I'm not. Okay. Well, I'm going to give you access to that. So Doug, can we send her, uh, access to the private forums? You're on Facebook. Do you have a Facebook account? I do have a Facebook account. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to make sure Doug gets you access to the private forum. And in there is, it's a small community of, of people that have been listening to us since most of them, since the beginning, most of them gone through our programs and it would help if I actually saw you, right? So we're sitting here trying to speculate and, and guess based off of how you're describing things. But I would love to see the way you move and the way it looks on you because one, Sal could be absolutely right. You could be just being really hard on yourself and you probably look phenomenal. Or it could be something mechanically going wrong. Like we could see the way you squat or move and maybe there's something there that we can help out with. Uh, but I agree with Sal, like not focusing, being so hard on yourself. If you're someone who's been all the way down to 8% body fat, I bet you look pretty damn good. So I, I don't, I don't think it's that. I think it might, he might be right. There might be something a little bit there where you're probably a little harsh on yourself, but there also could be something going on movement wise that we could potentially help you with. And in that forum, there's a, a, just a collection of people like ourselves. We're in there. We've got a lot of PTs, doctors, nutritionists, therapists, everybody's in there. And if you come on there and kind of share what you're going through, either there's probably other people that have also gone through that. And two, we can take a look at you and probably give you a little bit more advice. Oh, wow. That sounds great. Yes. Excellent. Awesome, Sally. Thank you so much for calling, Sally. Yeah, thank y'all for uh, helping me out. It was so good to talk to y'all. Thank you. Right on. Thank, thank you. you. That's a really hard one, dude. That's yeah, a tough one. A one. You know, it, it, it's you know, it's funny. You, and you you start listening a little bit to how she's talking about. Well, you, you know, nailed it. With. You nailed it when when she said she's been down to eight percent and it wasn't body. gone. Then you okay? You 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 might be a little a little harsh, and I know it, what that feels like. Well, especially if she doesn't think that it's uh, body fat, because right. I've I've shared on the show many times. I mean, I've, that that blew me away. Like I thought it was the weirdest thing ever. I'd never seen that on my body before. But dude, eight percent for a woman's like three percent for a man. Yes yeah. and no, right? Like uh, K- Katrina carries her body fat percentage really low. It never made sense to me. Every time we've tested consistently, she's like around ten or eleven percent. And I mean, you see my girl; yeah. she doesn't look ten or eleven percent. Mm-hmm. So some. Some people just their 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 body fat percentage will read lower like that. She's one of those people, so that doesn't quite tell the full story. You know that just because she says she's at eight, she's been at eight percent body fat. Um, but the fact that she thinks it's not fat yet something is sticking out and protruding, then that also makes me think of just like the way her her posture is. And she yeah, might just have I'm that. And she might yep. just have that structure. You know, uh, right, right. That's women what, in particular, they'll get lean and they'll have the the lower. Uh, this is Jessica. Her lower abs 
will mm-hmm. come and then they'll come in down towards her pelvis. Right. And yeah. I find it, I think it's extremely attractive. It looks very That's why I want to see her, right? So yeah. that's part of why I'm like, get on the forum, let me see a picture right. because then maybe we can talk talk some sense into her if she does look phenomenal and it just literally is just She her. may just need reassurance. Yeah, it could be her anatomy. Yeah. We're yeah. all, we're all, I mean- you know, I remember when I was competing, I would uh, get so many guys that would be asking like how you develop this certain looking abs and everybody has like different abs. Yep. You've oh, got yeah. some people with these very- It varies all over the place. Yeah, blocky looking. Some people have abs that are like, uh, they're not lined up. So they're they're uh-huh. off, they're uh-huh. off on it. You know, and you just- I have one big one. I'm like, why yeah, was this one bigger? Yeah, and that's not, that's not something you're going to go train and change. It just could be your anatomy. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, I'd like to look at her and mm-hmm. see if it's, if it's that or maybe it's more what Sal, you were alluding to, but yeah, I mean, the, the dark side of fitness is you really can get into it and then you can get really critical of yeah. yourself and just break it yourself down. It can become down. an obsession. And you're never perfect. There's well, I think, you and you, I also think it was great that you addressed too, that yeah. I don't think that it, it ever goes away for us. Like it's always... It's, if it was an in, if it was something that created a a deep insecurity in us that drove us to body dysmorphia where we were mm-hmm. doing things to our body, I don't. I think you can um, get beyond that. I think you can learn from that. But I think if if it was that much that it caused you to do things, it's forever kind of there. Well, right? tendencies will probably show. Yeah, up. it's. I mean, I know it's in the background always for me, and that's why I always like to kind of challenge it by like pushing myself the other direction to right. to, to to make sure I keep growing in that area because I know it's so deeply rooted. So. Yeah, that's a tough one without seeing somebody and being able to look and and assess ourselves. But I I think you hit the right areas. Our next caller is Matt from Texas. Hey, what's up, Matt? How can we help you? What's your question? Hi, thanks, Sal. Um, So my question is, I, uh, as kind of a a middle-aged lifter, I'm pushing 49. Um, I found that my uh, time constraints really only allow me to get in the gym consistently for about an hour, hour and a half, three times a week. And I've been running anabolic. I'm actually running on my, my third swim through that and love it. I really do. Um, but, uh, and it fits my schedule really well. But I wonder if there's something else I should be doing uh, to progress from there. Um, you know, another program, I, I, I looked at aesthetic and it looks cool, but five days a week is, is going to be hard to do. Um, should I try to modify another program or look at playing with different things within anabolic like tempos and things like that really just looking for some guidance on how i can you know keep enjoying this and, and progressing with the schedule constraints that i have no, that's really a, really good questions yeah and you know three days a week uh is great for great long-term success especially um if you're you know in your age group um i've trained people three days a week and gotten people to really advanced levels. Um, so I'm going to ask you a few more questions just so I can answer your question more specifically for you. Uh, first off, what are the kind of results and progress that you've experienced with MAPS Anabolic? And then what are some of the things that you'd want to work on um, now that you're potentially switching to a different program? Okay. Uh, so progress has, has been really cool. Um, you know, up until I started Anabolic, I'd messed around in the gym and never really seen much, but I've, I've really seen a lot of development in my back and, uh, um, like to see more in my arms and my chest, of course, um, and maybe shrink the midsection a little. But uh, um, you know, my, my goals for this are obviously overall health is, is most important, um, but you know, somewhat of aesthetic, to be honest. I mean, I'd, I'd like to be a little bigger in, in my arms and my chest and, and just kind of fill out my T-shirts a little better. I do have to say, all the shrugs and anabolic, um, none of my shirt collars fit anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's excellent. You know, one side of the, effect. The, 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 you know, and this is why we have so many different programs. They all have strengths, and you know what? When because they have strengths, that means that they may lack in other areas. Maps anabolic, phenomenal mass and strength builder. Okay, one of the the downsides of maps anabolic is uh, m- the lack of mobility work in it. Now, how does that apply to you? Well. If we can improve your mobility, the aesthetics are going to come faster and you're going to get a more balanced and symmetrical physique. The perfect program to move, especially if you've run MAPS Anabolic multiple times, the perfect program to transition to that will positively affect your aesthetics, especially, again, if you've done MAPS Anabolic a few times, is MAPS Performance. Now, I know we advertise MAPS Performance as an athletic training program, but it's exactly what your body's missing. And so what you're going to notice from MAPS Performance aside from the improvements in strength and you're going to move better, is all those exercises that you like in MAPS Anabolic, all those you know deadlifts and squats and presses 
that are building your physique right now, you're going to get better at them. And then those exercises are mm -hmm. going to do more for you. Um, the, other, the mass performance also has mobility sessions, which you could do at home, you know, when you have time with a broomstick or just your body, and it really only requires a few days a week uh, in the gym. Yeah, to add to that, the more uh, secure and stabilized your joints get, uh, you know, the more responsive your muscles are going to feel, and you know, you're you're going to be able to allow more force production. So, um, you, you know, it may seem like it's uh, you know a totally different uh, goal that you're going to be facing with with a program like Maps Performance, but again, like to Sal's point, it really does sort of uh, address a lot of underlying issues that are going to come up later on in terms of, you know, you're going to find yourself super tight. You're going to find your, some impingements uh, starting to form that's going to limit progress going forward. So this is the the perfect follow-up for you if you can make it work with your schedule. Yeah, well, I, I think uh, I, Matt is really, um, you're an example, I think, of what we, we kind of envisioned when we were building the order of these programs, right? Like you really fit the demographic of our average client. Mm -hmm. Somebody who wants to be a little stronger, they care about health. Yes, they do. They'd like to sculpt and shape their body a little bit. How would we progress them through programs? And it really is. It's anabolic performance and then aesthetic. And the good news about both performance and aesthetic, uh, you know, at, you look at it and it seems like you need to be in the gym five days a week, but you don't. They actually call for three days in a week. And then the other two days are like 20 minute sessions that can be done at home. In performance, they're mobility focused. And so you're doing, you could do that literally in your living room or in your garage or at home or on your lawn. It's, it's, it doesn't take that much time and it's designed to complement the programming that's in, in performance. And then if you move from there, you go into aesthetic and aesthetic is more on focused on building. So you said your chest and your arms. So that's exactly, we have the mold, moldability for whatever you want to focus on. So when you get to aesthetic, I would tell you your focus sessions to be chest and arms. And those are these 20 minute sessions that you can also do from home with bands or whatever you may have at your house to keep the program going. So all three of those programs only really require about three days inside the gym. And then the other bit of time can be done inside your home. And it is the perfect progression for somebody like you is to run anabolic like you've done, build a solid foundation move into performance, which you're going to do, do all kinds of new dynamic type of exercises focused on the mobility, on the uh, uh, off days of training at the gym, and then eventually move your way into aesthetic. Yeah. And you know, trust the process because here's what's going to happen, Matt. You're going to go into performance. You're going to notice some uh, performance, definitely performance improvements, but you'll also notice the aesthetic improvements. Then when you go to MAPS Aesthetic, the aesthetics are going to explode, but they have to be done in that order um, for, for best results. Do you have access by the way to mass performance, Matt? No, I, I don't. Okay. You, well, you do now. We're going to send that over to you. Awesome. Thank you. That's great. No problem. And we appreciate your support a lot. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah great question. Yep. Hey, thank you all for everything. I, I really enjoyed following you. It, it's been really great. Thank awesome. you. Thank awesome. Thank you, Matt. Yeah. I really, I really love hearing stuff like that, especially so, from so a guy's age. And, you know, um, and, you know, I love that he's getting great results. Oh, he's uh, doing the right things. Yep. Yep. And yep. he'll get blown away. You know, I think you'll get, people sometimes think, oh, I'm going to focus on performance and mobility. My aesthetics are going to suffer. They won't. They right. will get better. I think it's a regression, but That's really, right. yeah, you're just working on other things. You know, something I didn't get to say to him that hopefully he listens to this so we can add to this is that, you know, we when we I think we talked a lot about this when we first started the show, when we first were creating the programs, and maybe we've gotten away from reminding people this that when we created these, uh, they were designed to to be moldable. You know, they weren't this. You have to follow it exactly to a T. So one of the cool things is if he goes from anabolic to performance and aesthetic, and he gets to experience all those those different ways of programming, he can start to grab and pick and choose from those programs. Yeah. So if he loves the anabolic layout of the three day a week coming to the gym and like that fits his lifestyle, he can totally take some exercises that we have put in performance to help improve mobility and work in different planes. He can take some exercises that we've had in aesthetic mm -hmm. that oh, are yeah. designed to build, uh, build, bring up lagging body parts like his chest and arms, and he can start to kind of piece it together in anabolic or in that type of a format and get some of those carryovers. And so that's really how these were all designed is that it's, it's like education to take you through this process. Then once you've gone through all the programs and you start to piece together what works really well for you, there's nothing wrong with you going, hey, I'm going to run a three day a week program because that works best for my schedule. But boy, I love when I do these exercises in aesthetic, I see my body respond really well. When I do these exercises in performance, man, it really helps my hip mobility. And I noticed this with my shoulders, like start to 
build your own program that way from the knowledge that you gain from going through the other Oh, yeah. Program. Once you learn your body, there is no better trainer than yourself. That's right. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. Come check us out on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find all of us on social media. Instagram is our favorite place to be. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. We have this very minimal base of movement quality, yet we try to add so much strength and performance on top of that. And I think when you can rearrange those and put the squat back into perspective as a movement first, because in order to squat with great movement, you have to have good foot stability, good ankle mobility, great hip mobility.